Hello crafty friends, it's Debbie again with Make It With Me. Today I am going to be using these Give It A Whirl dies from Stampin' Up. These came out in, I believe it was last year's catalog and I just knew I had to have them right away. So I had shown a card on another video where I used this one and I had a few emails to show putting this together. So um, this is a little piggy card that I made. Now this Piggy set is a new set that just came out in the new catalog, and I missed the last pig set, and I regretted it, so I made sure I got this one. So I'll put a link below for this one because it's just really, really cute. I love that pig on the scooter. But um, I'm going to be using for this card a set that was free with Celebration this time, and uh, rather than using the little domed-looking um I don't know what you call that. I guess it's just the little cut out piece. I'm going to use the circles. The one that just it turns. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the technical name for that is. But anyway, instead of the little windshield, windshield wiper looking thing, I'm going to use the circles. And then that uh, decorative piece on the outside is the overlays. And these are the Hippest Hippo dies. And these were free with a $50 order from Celebration. And there were also um, a set of dies that you could get free, too. So for a $100 order, you get, with your $100 order for free, you get the stamps and the dies. So I thought that was really cool. And I loved these little hippos because I think you can use things like this, little pigs and the hippos. I think you can use those on. It doesn't have to be just a kid card. So here I've got my um, my wheel piece cut out and I am just taking a pencil and just kind of putting those where I want them to fall. And you'll see why I'm doing that because I want to make sure that I stamp in the right spot so what I want to show through the little window shows. And so I'm just kind of testing out my theory here. And that paper is that Simply Marvelous paper. That was also a free 6x6 six six 48 sheet set from a previous celebration. So I have tons of this. And I'm thinking about including, starting to include some of those sheets in some of my giveaways soon. Because I've just got such a stash. I don't know. <laughs> It'll take me years to use them all. Why not share, right? So here I am just placing my little hippo because I've got my circles drawn and I'll go back and erase those. But I'm going to use my, and I think you all have seen me use, do this before, but I'm going to use a piece of acetate just to kind of test and make sure that my hippo stamps where I want it to. On things like this that I, I don't know, I, you all may do better at this than I do, but sometimes I just don't get it exactly where I want it. So I'm just using my acetate to test that, and you can do this with anything. But it just helps me just so that I don't mess up things and I just get them right the first time. It just saves a lot of time. <laughs> so um, I'm testing here and here I get it where I want it and I like that. And so I'll just wipe that acetate off and keep that handy. And I'm just going to kind of see, you know, where that my pencil marks are. And so that'll tell me that is exactly what will show through my little window. So once I get all these images stamped, I can erase those pencil marks. And then here I am switching to Memento because I decided rather than watercolor these, I'm going to go with alcohol markers to color my hippos. And you want to use Memento or some type of a hybrid ink um, if you're going to do the uh, alcohol markers. I've got some hybrid ink that I haven't tested yet. I uh, may do a video on that. But anyway, so I've got both my images uh, printed, stamped. I cannot talk today. Goodness. So, but my, sent my little greeting here, my other little greeting, it, it doesn't have to be tested because it fits in the window perfectly. But, uh, and you'll see, I do kind of decorate this with one of the little um, texture stamps with that set. And so I'm going to include a little bit of coloring with this video. So I've got my little insight. This is the image that's going to be my large image on the front of my card. And I am using the Ohuhu markers. Those are my alcohol. I don't have the grays. I am just starting my collection of Stampin' Up! Uh, blends because I've gotten a few of those and I've liked these markers. I've done good with them, but many of them are beginning to dry up and I don't want to invest in an entire new set. And plus I am discovering that I really like the brush tip on the Stampin' Up! The Stampin' Blends. 
better because it's a little bit shorter and firmer than these brush tips are and since I typically do smaller images smaller stamped images I really like the brush tip better and I also like that the um the other end of the Stampin' Blend markers is a bullet nib instead of a chisel because I find that I don't use the chisel much. Now, if you color larger images, you may love this bigger brush and the chisel, but for what I do, I'm finding that I really love the tips on the Stampin' Blends, and I've had really good luck with them blending well. So, uh, back to the coloring. I'm just taking, I'm trying to leave the lids here in case you have the Ohuhus. These are the three colors of gray that I'm using. And I've seen people do both ways. I typically start with the lightest color. And I've heard people say that they go ahead and start with the darkest. So that you don't um, end up using as much and use up all of your light as quickly. And I, you know, that's perfectly fine I think and I, I probably have done that but I typically start with the lightest then go with my darkest then my medium and then back over with my lightest and then you'll see here that I want the the head and the body to be a little bit lighter than the snout and the belly of the hippo so I'm only using two colors on the snout and the and the belly I'm using the medium and the light I won't be using any dark on that and then you can see what I've already colored has already soaked into the paper quite a bit so I'll go back over with my colors again on the head and the body and but I think these little hippos are just so cute and this is such easy coloring you all even if you're not a colorist because I am not I just love to play with the colors I just really like to color with different mediums but uh, anybody can do this it's so easy once you get your color combinations down um, you can color and blend about anything so here I'm just laying down my second layer and you, you'll be able to see that just putting that second layer on there makes a lot of difference because the first layer is already soaked in. This one will soak in, but not as much because there's already color behind it. And alcohol markers just work like that. They're almost like, to me, they're just like magic. I just think they're so neat. Um, so I'm getting my hippo here finished. And I won't show you all of the coloring. I just kind of wanted you to see my thought process here and how I was coloring in these little hippos. And again, I will check and see if these are still available. Celebration is going on through August the 31st, and today is only the 22nd. So you've got about a little less than 10 days left if there's anything that you see that you would like. Some of the free items are already gone. Uh, you know, with shipping things the way they are right now, some of the items were run out, that's tamping up, run out of them. But um, they've got some new things posted that are not in the little celebration brochure, but you can go online and I'll put a link to that. But, um, and I'll also put my shopping link in case you're interested in anything. But um, here I'm adding just a little bit of light pink. This was kind of a last minute decision, but I wanted to just, I don't know, I wanted a little something more than just all grays in there. And so I added a little pink to the belly and the mouth and the lips. And then um, I'll finish this coloring and come back. So here are all of my colored images. I think they turned out super cute. Isn't that kind of neat the way those two are right next to each other? I may have to try to do some masking and recreate that because <laughs> that was purely accidental. It just worked out that way the way I was stamping them on the on that little wheel because they're separate but they're I don't know. They kind of looked like together and I thought hmm that might be really cute for a card. So I um, randomly got a new idea there. So I've got my wheel attached with my little um, brad, and then I'm going to show you how I cover that up, the little brad later, which you don't have to cover it up. I just I just wanted that little extra overlay piece because I wanted something on there. And I'm looking at the dies that came with the set, and I thought about using the little boat and umbrellas and things, but um, I'm just kind of choosing here what I want. You see the little snorkel and everything on there? Those are so cute. There's so many neat things you could do with the set. So I end up choosing these little hearts uh, and the stars, not stars, flowers. Those little flowers really just scream 70s to me too. They're just the way that they're kind of wonky on, this, on, the, on the petals. So I'm just going to get my small mini stamp and cut emboss machine and cut some of those out 
and I just wanted to demonstrate this. You all will see that I'm not using the plates that came with it. I discovered that I had some of those little mini mats and I cut it to fit. And so I'm using, it's kind of like the magic mat that you see everybody use, but I had gotten these smaller ones on Amazon and I just cut it to fit. And boy, it sure is extending the life of my plates. So there's a little tip for you because you get, when you buy this little machine, you get those two plates that come with it. And you know how die cutting machines are. You, you usually choose one that's your cutting plate and one to go on top. And it just, they start warping pretty quickly, I think, with all die cutting machines. And so this little mat um, is a little tip. because um, I've saved one of those and I won't have to buy new cutting plates for a long time to come, I don't think. So... Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I get a little off camera here and I've got my little flowers placed on there. Now, I will tell you later in the video, you'll notice I end up not using those hearts. I did more of the flowers. I changed my mind on the hearts and just wanted to stick with the flowers. And so I've got my little pieces cut out that I'm going to use for that to kind of frame out that little circle so it doesn't look so plain. And I'll get those glued together, get my cutting done and come back and show you and then we'll get all of this glue down but i'm just kind of placing my flowers and here's where i decide i'm not going to use the hearts i'm just going to go with the flowers and i think that's plenty and then i'm going to go ahead and do my sentiment or my greeting strip and i'm choosing the one that says love you tons i don't really have anyone in mind for this card just yet and you know how sometimes you'll do a card and you do have someone in mind for it. But this one, I just wanted to use the hippos. You know, got a new set, wanted to use them. So I'll decide on the inside later. And But I just wanted to use that Love You Tons. And then I'm going to kind of show you how I do my own bannering. I know a lot of people, those of you that have been making cards for a long time probably already know this. And you may have learned it the same way I did, just watching other people's YouTube videos. But um, unless you're one of those people who has the die sets with the banners and just makes a bunch of them up just to have them readily available at all times, I am really trying to declutter my desk. I find that, yes, there is convenience to having a lot of those things just lying around, but I'm also finding that my desk gets so cluttered that I just don't have room to work because I don't know about you, but I'm a messy crafter. So some new card makers wanted to see how to do these banners. And so I know I've done them in other videos, but I thought I would just mention that. So some of you new ones who emailed me, um, I told you that it would be in this video. So thanks for suggesting that. And I'm hoping that I get more suggestions like that. Uh, one of my friends wants me to show how to take some of your older red rubber stamps and use some of your adhesive that you get when you get your new red rubber ones to make those older ones sticky because most of us know back in the day those red rubbers they just weren't very sticky and they just didn't wouldn't stick to things so there's a way to remedy that though it's without spending any money so i'm going to do a short video on that those that use the stampin up products like i do so there's my greeting strip, and I'll get this cleaned up, get my cutting done, get those glued down, and then um, just kind of show you how we get this all put together. I think it's looking really cute, though. I was really happy with the way this came out. And those little flowers just really, I just love that they look so 70s. And I think I do end up going back and putting a, I don't know if I left this in the video, I kind of forgot, but I do use some Wink Estella to get uh, some glitter, just to put a little bit of sparkle on those flowers, and on the little black frame that goes around the circle. And you will notice that I don't use any foam tape on this. I do. I will say that if you want to make it easy for the person to turn that little wheel on that top layer, you can put foam tape on there. I didn't do that on this one just because the paper I used, that uh, marble paper, it's not a real heavy paper. If you're using a heavier cardstock, uh, I would recommend using some of that. But it, it's you still you still can turn it. 
And you'll also see on here that um, I did not use the die that has the little arrow. I forgot to do that piece of it, which it's really not necessary. If you can draw the arrow, you can do that too. It is just really cute though, because if you want to cut it out in a special pretty color, it looks good on the card and it can go a little over the line there that on the edge. But I ended up just taking a marker and drawing it on there. And then I'm just going to pop up the greeting strip. And yes, I put glue on it, changed my mind, and decided to pop it up. There's no purpose in putting the glue on and then the dimensionals. So I know it looks that way, but there was no purpose in that. I just was going to glue it straight down and decide to pop it up at the last minute. So there is my card. And I just think it turned out super cute. So I just want to thank you all so much for stopping by and look. Oh, look at that. I almost forgot about my black pieces. I'm going to glue those together and come back and show you the end of this one. Then we'll be at the end of the card. <laughs> oh my goodness. One of those days. There we go. And then here I'm just drawing that on. So I hope that you all like this card. Leave a comment. Let me know if you liked it and uh, what else you'd like to see. I hope you'll come back. I thank you so much, and happy stamping, everyone.